Okay, it's Kevin from JJ Hat Center again. Our video yesterday about Western hats, what not to do with them, uh, was extremely popular, and uh, it actually got cut off in the middle. I had a, uh, you know, actually a little list of things I wanted to tell you. So the ones that we already went over, okay, we went over never put powder or cornstarch on a silver belly hat. Um, Unless you live in a place like Arizona, you know, with Death Valley, where there's no no rain, um, any type of moisture, even humidity in the air, sweat will mix with the powder and leave it blotchy and orangey looking. It's destroyed, terrible. So it's not a home remedy for people that you know just have silver belly hats. It's people who do like horse shows and you know western shows and stuff, and they want their hat to look white. Um, but it never ever sees outdoors or rain or anything like that. So yeah, don't put powder in your hat. We walked, we talked about spraying water. There's no reason to spray water on your hat ever. Steam is what you'd use. Um, unless it's a palm straw. Palms can be shaped with water. You could actually spray them soaking wet, you know, like really saturated wet. Not the inside, you know. And then tie it up into like a cool western shape or something with some wire or string. And then, uh, you know, when it's totally dry, it will lock into that. Um, it's very, very stiff, and that stiffener kind of uh, repels the water. And I don't know what it is. They're just bulletproof, those palms. So, yeah, you could spray those with water. Anything else, use steam. Never, ever soak your hat in naphtha. Okay? That's another thing. Um, it's a some kind of a weird internet forum rumor thing, or it's from the old, old days or something. I did know a hat maker who used to spray rubbing alcohol all over the felt hats, just spray it, spray it, spray it, hang it out in the fire escape to dry, and that was his method of cleaning hats. Um, he charged a good amount for that. It was like, I don't know, 25, 50 bucks or something. And, um, this was way back, you know, like 94, 95, 96 or something. And I don't know what he charged for it, but it didn't always do anything. It, made, it kind of made the whole hat sort of fade out a little bit. So some of the dirt fades, but some, like everything kind of fades. Um, yeah, don't soak it in lighter fluid. Um, it's very, very dangerous, and you don't want caustic chemicals, you know, like in your crown of your hat, like right by your brain and stuff. Um, it's just not a good idea. Don't do it. Um, I don't want one of you guys lighting yourselves on fire also. And, um, yeah, so we went over those three. Uh, I'm going to go over, like, maybe uh, another three today. Um, so, so today's going to be part two of uh, what not to do with your cowboy hats uh, slash western hats, okay? Now let's do uh, another song uh, in the... The same vein as the one we're doing yesterday. I think this is an old Jimmy Reed song.
just tall, that's just about it. So if I'm a little bit lower on steam today, that's why. Fill my cup up probably right after this video. That one's fizzy. Alright, let's talk about it now. Um, here are some more things that you just definitely, definitely don't do it okay, to your hat. There's, there's no exception. It's not like, um, well, well, I heard this guy said it's good and that guy says it's bad. Well, th this guy had good luck. These are just don't. Definitely don't. I'm a guy who works in a pretty busy hat shop, you know, like the oldest hat shop in New York. And, you know, it's huge. It's pretty busy most of the time. But um, I'm there a long time. You know, I work generally five days six days at Christmas time, usually five days, like 99% of the time. Kind of a nine to five, everyday job, like, you know, most people do. But um, I see all the problems. Um, generally, when somebody comes in wearing a hat or holding a hat, first thing, you know, I know, okay, this guy wants to get his hat fixed or steamed or something like that, and I approach him and stuff, you know. Um, I'm also the guy that sometimes if there's like a really messed up problem or something that like nobody can really address because it looks too risky or just, you know, dirty work or something, they'll give it to Kev because, you know, it's, that's like my specialty, you know, it's fixing the hats and I'm not afraid to get my hands dirty and, you know, totally stretch a hat and, you know, reshape it and clean it up and sand it down and, you know, even when there's grime. You know, some people bring me hats and they're out of shape, but there's so much black grime, you know, in certain areas that it builds up. It's just like, you know, whatever, sweat and fingerprints. It turns into like a thick film of like black, you know, book that you got to sand all that stuff off just to get to the felt, you know. I do all these weird things for uh, hats that are been you know, like in fires and everything. Where a lot of people just say no, you know. We don't even want that in our shop, you know. Um, we, we kind of, will, you know, if a hat smells really bad or if it's got, you know, like infestation, if we find like, you know, a bug in there or something, then we'll say, okay, no, we can't take this because it'll mess the rest of our hats up. Um, that's where we draw the line. But basically, yeah, um, I'm the guy who sees all the stuff. I see, you know, the, the hats that get messed up by people and the way they mess them up and um, and I'm a hat wearer too so I mess up my own hats you know and I, I see what to avoid but I still do certain things and you know it's just natural just like shoes are gonna get worn out your hats gonna get worn out too if you wear it like you know every day nine to five at work and sweating it every day no matter how much you know about hats, your hat's going to get old and it's going to start getting, you know, worn or something. But um, there are preventative measures you can take to keep your stuff from screwing up. Um, I'll show you in today's video a few things that are just, uh, that have been done that, you know, people do it, but you should never, ever, ever do it. Okay, first is wet brushing. 
Okay, so the deal is when you get like a stain, let's say this hat was like white felt or something, or a really light beige. Um, let's say I, I just grabbed a newspaper and then I went like this a whole bunch of times. And I got some, you know, like fingerprints on it, you know, from newsprint or just from like, you know, the oil and whatever. Okay, so this light colored hat has like some surface dirt on it now. Um, that's no big deal for a good, you know, fur felt hat, a real hat, you know. Something made out of fur felt generally is no problem. Um, I'll just go in the back, I'll take the little sanding block and I'll just, you know, I won't sand the, the stain, I'll do the whole area. And I'll kind of, you know, blend it into nothingness kind of, you know, or I'll sand the whole brim, the whole side of a brim or something like that. Or sometimes I'll sand the whole hat down and just, you know, I get carried away and it's like, okay, you know, let's hook this guy up. And I just sand the entire hat. But, um, if it's from the outside, it comes off like, generally no problem. If it's deep, like, let's say somebody spilled red wine on here, um, Okay, if you grab it real fast with a tissue, bam, you know, it's on the surface. But most of the time, that's going to soak down into it. You could grind away felt, grind away the top layer, the layer before that, but it's still red no matter how deep you go in. So the idea is you could get stuff off the top surface of felt, fingerprints, any kind of dirt, whatever it is, uh, bird, dirt, you know, it doesn't matter what it is. It could be something really bad, like like a horrible stain, like, like candle wax or something. But as long as it doesn't go deep and it's on the surface, you're good. Um, wet brushing is basically the worst thing you can do. If you have a stain, you wet brush it, you're taking it, you're pushing it in further. So let's push it in deeper into the felt. And um, let's wet it so that the water just actually just brings it all the way into the felt, spreads it out this way horizontally like a big circle and then into it. So, so you know, water and pray. Don't wet brush. That's the worst thing you could do. Whatever's on there, if it's not dry already, let it dry. If it's like a piece of bird dropping, you know, just take like a business card and flip most of it off. Let it dry. It turns into like a powder um, when it's dry, and then we can just let it go. Um, we just buff it out. Um, it's not a big deal. But never ever wet brush, uh, wet sand, wet brush, all that kind of stuff. Don't do it. It's something you do when the hat's completely dry. If you have some dirt, whatever, is on the edge of here, I could sand that out. If it's over here, I could sand it out. Um, use some pretty fine sandpaper, you know, and then get finer, 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 finer after that to, to buff it. And it's much better on a block. Uh, I like to use these sponge blocks, these disposable ones, which work really well. You don't have to be that picky about what uh, type of sandpaper you use, but um, you know, make sure it's clean and then you know, don't make like a divot, not a hole in it. Like you don't want to, like if there's one stain here, you don't want to just get that stain because then it's like it looks cleaner than the rest of the hat. You want to like flat buff the whole area. So you're cleaning this whole area plus the stain. So it's all in the technique. You have to do it lightly and evenly. Um, never ever wet brush a hat. Okay. Um, I wrote a couple of things down. Okay, here's another one. Never let anybody steam inside your hat. Okay, um, if you've worked in a hat shop as long as me, you've seen this happen. You you might have even done it yourself once or twice and learned your lesson. Um, if leather is at all dehydrated, like uh, I'm talking about, you know, just a hat that's a little bit old, like five years or something. If the steamer just hits it, you know, I'm talking about like a real steamer. As soon as the steam hits that leather, all the hydration just instantly comes out of it and it burns. It kind of looks like, um, sort of like, it shrinks up into this little like rawhide hard rock thing. Um, the consistency is like crumbling. You could just crunch the leather up. Um, and um, 
it's worthless. There's no way you could rehydrate it. It's gone. It's burned into like a little tube. It looks like a Twizzler. And um, if you see it kind of getting small in one area, that's from somebody steaming it. Like, you know, it wrinkles up and gets real small. That's a burn. A total burn, it goes and just turns into like a rawhide. I don't know if you remember those rawhide bones you used to give your dogs. That's what leather is like when you just totally get rid of all the moisture. It feels like that. Um, it turns into rawhide, like one of those uh, chew sticks that they give dogs and stuff, those bones. So, yeah, never, if you see some idiot, like, you know, at a chain store, like some teenage dude who obviously never touch the steamer, doesn't know anything about steaming a hat. He says, oh, don't worry, I'm going to steam your hat now. I'm, now I'm going to sterilize it. And he steams the inside. Shout something really loud at him. Yell. Try to get his attention. So he stops immediately because like the second that hits the band, it could burn it and destroy the leather sweatband. If it's your hat, a vintage hat, an older hat, yes. If it's a brand new hat, the, ch the chances are pretty slim because it's super hydrated and stuff. Um, vintage hats, yes, it takes a split second. It's just like, pfft, gone. So if you see that dude and he's about to, you know, okay, but pretend the camera's a steamer. He's about to put this right over, you know, to get it steamed, up to steam in here. You just scream. He's like, hey, stop. And don't worry if he gets startled and, you know, burns himself because, you know, he probably deserves to get a little burn. Um, for being so cocky with your precious vintage heirloom. Um, never steam inside. You will destroy the sweatbands. And yeah, you can change a sweatband, but you know, if it's a vintage hat, you, you want the, the logo, the Stetson, or whatever, the vintage sweatband. You don't want a generic, like, uh, you know, a Joe's hat repair or a generic black sweatband on there, you know. And, Getting a sweatband changed is expensive, it's not cheap. So never ever steam the inside. I know I'm overstating my case, but it's so important. If you see any jerks doing this, they're totally wrong. There's no reason ever to steam the inside. Now, if you have a ribbon sweatband or a cloth sweatband, it's a non-issue, okay? It's not gonna hurt anything. So if you have a travel hat with a cloth sweatband, you know, yeah, you know, do what you, what you got to do, you know. Um, but as far as sterilizing the inside, I would rather do something like this. I would take some alcohol and uh, put it on a paper towel, quickly wipe the leather, very quickly, get it all, get a second one to dry it, second paper towel, and have a third paper towel with some water. Then take some water, put the water on the inside of the band, wash the alcohol off if you can, and then just, you know, dry it again. Dry it with a nice fourth. Um, for me, I don't like the alcohol to soak on there very long. I don't want it to dry out the leather, but if you want to kill some germs on there, that's probably the quickest way to do it. Um, use alcohol, don't use heat. Um, another thing, you could just take the lining out, just flip this, pull the lining out, just get it out. You could throw it away, you could wash it, you just wash it with like a quarter cap of wool eye, you know, don't wring it, but rinse it out, good, obviously, put it on a towel to dry, and um, when it does finally dry, you can uh, steam it if it looks wrinkly, it's probably going to look wrinkly. So just get some steam going, wave it in front of the steam, like a brush, and just kind of hit it and, and brush it while it's steaming. You'll get the wrinkles out. Um, but yeah, we sell liners if you need like a, a new lining. If you have a stinky lining inside, throw it out. Call JJ's, tell us what size hat you are, and we could send you a, a lining out. They're easy to put in. You just basically go like this, tuck it right in. Look, you don't need any kind of glue or stitching. Although you can do that if you want. You could use a couple of pieces of tape. Um, you could use hot glue. You could use any kind of craft glue. But um, you'd be surprised. Most companies use nothing. They just place the linings in there. So, you know, I'm going to say the most common thing to do is to get a glue stick. And then, you know, like, it looks like they take a glue stick that's hot and they just wipe the inside of the felt with it, like one, two, three times maybe. So it's 
kind of sticking against the side of the inside of the crown. Um, they probably have some kind of glue, uh, glue gun, you know, that they use. They hit it one, two, three. But with glue guns, you can't leave a three-dimensional drop of glue because it hardens into like a little hard pearl. Then you feel these little plastic pearls. So you have to actually wipe the glue gun on the felt. It's like a quick wipe so that it's two-dimensional, not three-dimensional. You don't want any drops of hot glue inside where the lining is because, yeah, it dries into this hard little ball and you can feel it. So, wipe. Um, piece of tape works. You could use uh, adhesive, uh, what's that tape, uh, the medical tape, the white stuff? That stuff is really good. Adhesive tape or whatever, whatever they call that stuff. Um, medical tape. Duct tape is also good because it doesn't sweat out those two tapes. So if you have it inside and it's getting sweaty and moist, you know, uh, the glue won't dry out. So duct tape uh, is good if you want to use that. Just, you know, little tiny pieces. You cut them and then flip up the, um, flip up the sweatband. Okay, and what you do is you're taping the lining in there, so when you cover it, nobody's going to see the tape. It's invisible. It just keeps the lining from moving around a little. You can even put a little ring of tape on the actual right there where the center crease is so that the lining sticks against it and doesn't fall down into your head. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have, uh, I mean, I think the wipe is better to use the hot glue gun, but most people don't have it, so yeah. Personally, I don't think it's important to really attach it with anything. I just stick my linings in, and um, most of the time I just remove my linings altogether because I have so much hair that it's very rare that I'm going to actually sweat through the top here. You know, I don't have, like, too much skin there touching the hat. Um, but uh, also I have lots of hair, so I get hot. So I pull my linings out because it's, it's a lot cooler for me when I'm at work. The hat breathes a little more. Okay, so let's move on. Never steam inside the crown, number two. Never wet brush was number one. Let's go to the hat jack. Okay, a hat jack is something that's like, um, it's two little half moon, see this shape here, that half moon shape? It's a piece of wood like that, and then another half moon at the bottom of the hat, connected by a, a little, uh, kind of like a, a threaded uh, thing with a grip. So what it is, it's a hat stretcher. As you go this way and crank it open, the two half moon pieces of wood separate open like a reverse vise, you know, stretches. And then what you're supposed to do is steam the hat in the back, right where the seam is here, okay? But not on the leather, because you don't want to burn the leather. You steam it here. What that does is it makes those stitches, these stitches, more elastic, okay? So you steam it. And you'll actually hear it creak, it'll, it'll open up. And then you open it more, crank, 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 steam here. You feel it creak in your hands, that's the actual stretching from the heat. Crank, steam, crank. When you finally get it to the point where it's, let's say, overstretched, let's say you needed a 20% stretch, got to overstretch it by like maybe three or four times. So I'll go 60-80% stretch just to wind up with 20 because it, it contracts at the end, it shrinks back. So you have to severely overstretch it. So you take the hat jack. One good tip too is that when it's against the back, so you got that little half moon piece of wood, try to line up the end of the hat jack with this line so you don't get a stretch mark over here from the piece of wood coming out or over here, you want the stretch mark to be right there. So when you're placing your hat jack in the hat, okay, line it up to this line. Feel, feel through the hat, line it up, and then in the front too, okay. Another reason why you're going to steam in the back is because what that does is it makes the stretch happen in the back only. So the front of the hat will look perfect, but the back will have a, see that? this thing here, the back will have the stretch that you just created with the hat jack. Okay, so it's kind of more, it's more up here actually. It's kind of like, so you want the stretch to happen in the back where nobody can see it, it's less conspicuous. 
it's another reason, you know, why you basically steam in the back. Okay, so you're cranking it open, you're cranking it open. You're also watching these stitches on the side because it's going to start like stretching like this and stretching and they'll be under pressure. And you want to stop right at the point where you think those stitches are going to pop. And they can move a good bit, you know. When you, you don't want this to pop because then you have to go and re-sew the band and everything. So the idea is stretch, stretch, stretch to the hat, you know, it looks all distorted. And keep your eye on that bow because you don't want that to pop. When you feel that it's like, you know, stretch to the hilt, then you stop. Wait for it to cool. When it's completely cool, like, you know, after half an hour, an hour, overnight, whatever you want, I would say at least a half an hour. Maybe an hour is better. Let it completely cool. Take the hat jack out. Okay, you're going to wind up with a big, big stretch. It will feel too big, but then it's going to start shrinking back. And then, you know, after a little time, you're going to find, okay, so I got about a 10, 20% stretch when all is said and done. So you have to severely overstretch. Now, the thing with the hat jack, the point I'm getting to, I know I went off on a tangent and stuff, but a lot of people use the hat jack for different purposes. They don't use it for stretching a hat to make a hat bigger, okay? Now, let's say the guy is a size 8 and 1 8 and they only make hats up to a size 8, so he needs it to be bigger. A lot of guys will use the hat stretcher as a shoe tree to keep it from shrinking any further. Um, they also use it as a shoe tree kind of thing. They just store the hat with the hat jack in it. Just basically they feel it's kind of like a shoe tree. It's something they could buy that's good for their hats. It keeps it in shape. No good. Don't use it to keep it from shrinking, and don't use it to hold its shape. It's used basically to stretch, okay? And it will only stretch if you steam it first. Steam it in the back. Steam, 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 crank, steam, crank, steam, crank. You'll feel the pressure get real loose after you steam that it'll tighten up. And then you steam it again, and it'll do some more cranking, and it'll tighten. Steam it, okay. Then when it's totally cool, you take it out. This is how it works. It's the only way you're going to wind up with any real stretch. Um, if you're using it as an anti-shrinking device, like you're just keeping it in while the hat's in the hat box because you're afraid that the hat might shrink up and get smaller than a size 8, um, it's futile. It's, uh, it's worthless this way because basically as soon as you pull it out, the hat starts contracting. You know, it feels good for a couple of minutes. Oh, yeah, this feels real good. By the time, you know, you get on the bus to work, or, you know, you're like, oh, man, oh, man, I got that red line again. Oh, ow, it hurts. Oh, I can never stretch this thing. What's wrong with it? All right. You can't use it that way. First of all, the hat jack has a lot of weight to it. It's just like so much weight. It affects the hat in its storage. You want a hat to stay on its brim, and you want, on its crown like this, upside down, you want the brim to stay in its original shape with this nice scoop kind of curve to it, okay? You want that to stay. You don't want to lose that. So there's a little ring that kind of sits on in the box like this. And it's elevated and the hat is almost just balancing very delicately in a nice stable position, but there's only pressure right here. Now if you take a heavy, you know, hat jack, so they use like a 2 by 4 it's really thick, you know, one, one, with the, I don't know, the steel thing or whatever it's made out of, some kind of alloy, um, when you put that in, it's just like, it's weight, um, and the hat just dries funny if it's a little moist, and it, it just, just from storing in that weight, it affects it. Um, the other thing is, it's not going to prevent shrinking, it's just not going to do that. Um, what will prevent shrinking is keeping it away from heat. If you have a hot closet or a hot room in the winter, or, you know, when you're blasting steam from the radiators, that's when you're shrinking your hats. So keep your hats in the coolest place of the house. Um, you know, you might not want to keep your hats in the basement or something like that, but you could keep them down there in the off season. You know, like, you know, keep your summer hats down in, in, when it's winter or something and vice versa. 
and the rest of your house you keep them as far away from a radiator as possible or you know if you have one room in the house that's got no radiators you know you can just keep it there crack the window um, if your hat is wet don't let it dry in a hot hot room um, when it's you know Christmas time or uh, February and the house is blasting heat that steam dries out your hat really fast so if it's a little wet from some snow or something that's shrinking it. So let it dry at room temperature, put it in the kitchen, the bathroom, and crack the window a little bit so you get a little bit of a cool breeze coming in there and the hat doesn't dry so fast. It's like drying it with a blow dryer or something. Um, so yeah, that's another thing. Um, never steam inside the crown. Don't use a hat jack to prevent shrinkage. Okay, um, what I would say is use it the right way. Uh, if you're having problems with the size over here, um, crank it open. Okay? Get that hat jack so that the wood, the end of the hat jack wood meets this line. So that when you do shrink it, I mean when you do stretch it, it's going to come out some in the back only behind your head and the stretch crease will be flush with this line so nobody will notice it. it it's like so subtle no one will see it you know it's just like kind of like the back comes out a little bit it's hard, it's hard to simulate yeah it's like a little something like that in the back and there's your stretch and the front looks perfect nothing so yeah steam in the back crank it steam it crank it till it stops you know, let the hat guide you, steam it again, okay, when the hat is really, you know, like, stretched, way overstretched, figure, if you needed to stretch it like one, two, three cranks, you got to go nine cranks or twelve cranks, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Then once you're at that spot, don't be scared, your hat's not going to dry like this. Um, then again, you, you probably don't want to steam the whole hat before you do this, if you do that, it'll dry like this. But you're steaming here, that's the only part that's going to get affected. So that will happen, it'll come out there, but don't steam anywhere else, okay? You'll have this hat that looks all distorted on the hat jack, but when you take it out, it'll relax, it'll look good again. You might have some distortion back here a little bit, you can take your, the flat part of your finger, kind of like, like this, on the inside, and as you're steaming the back, you could just sort of like, um, just like that. Kind of like, um, if here's your crease mark, you want your finger to be on both sides, kind of like that. So what you're doing is you're rubbing out that line. You're blending the big part to the small. So if it goes like this, you want it to just sort of blend. So you just kind of rub out the crease, you steam here, if you have anything cylindrical, you pull the hat, you, you steam here, and you pull the hat over cylindrical like hat stretcher, spin it around. You could get rid of those stretch marks, most of the time they're not that bad, you don't really see it, especially if you, like I said, you have to stretch the hat right here. Okay, this hat turned more into how to stretch a hat, this video turned into how to stretch a hat, it's really what not to do with a cowboy hat, so I'm going to wind it up. Maybe I'll write that on the thumbnail too, how to stretch a, a western hat too, right? Um. Never leave your hat on a sunny dashboard, any place where it's going to just bake. You know, the leather will dry up, it'll feel like a size or two too tight.